Leo Murray, business and crop online editor for Top Producer, and I'm visiting with Jerry Golke, the owner of Strategic Marketing Service and a Top Producer columnist. Today we're talking about USDA Supply and Demand Report. Jerry, can you give us some of the highlights of the report? Well, uh, yes, there wasn't a whole lot done that wasn't expected, I guess. It just confirms that uh, maybe we have bottomed out in this uh, demand destruction debate that we've been talking about uh, the government raised feed usage by about 50 million bushels, and I think that's on ideas that uh, uh, there was incentives to feed, to feed uh, cattle longer and that there may be perhaps there more hogs, hogs did not decrease as much as uh, the government thought they would at this time. Uh, they reduced uh, feed, seed, and industrial usage, which would probably be corn oil or, or uh, food that we uh, eat of some sort, but uh, about 10 million. They left un ethanol unchanged again at uh, 3.7 billion bushels uh, usage this year, and that's interesting to note because uh, they've been pretty staunch in saying, you know, ethanol is not going away. It's going to continue to be used, you know, in spite of uh, putting some people out of business and, uh, and breaking them why, uh, and going bankrupt. We we're still seem to be uh, at least crushing the, uh, the uh, eth uh, corn for ethanol. And anyway, at, at, as a result, we lowered the uh, carryover this year down to 1.7 billion bushels, down about about 40 million bushels. And the key is that carries into next fall, which is going to be on top of uh, what we produce this year. And, of course, 40 million bushels isn't a lot, but you got to remember 1 million acres is about 150 million bushels. So we, we use this year about 250,000 acres of next year's corn already. And, uh, you know, some thought in that acres report that that would be, uh, that we weren't reducing corn acres, that would be bearish, and it hasn't been. And in soybeans, we, we, uh, they, they raised exports like we thought because China is buying more. And, of course, Argentina's got a problem. Of course, Brazil's shipping is maxed out. So, so they come to us. And I guess the key that I look at in, uh, in this situation is, uh, a lot of the other countries that were buying worldwide, uh, weren't near as aggressive as China. So they've been lagging while China's been taking up the slack. And the question is, will, will China max out now, or will they uh, continue to buy like they have been, and will these other countries come in and, and make up the, the difference and start buying more? Uh, some, in, some in the industry think that that carryover, which the government's now got down to $165 million, they think it'll drop to $100 million bushels. Uh, and, of course, they're thinking by the end of August that's true. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. And if, if we would get see China cancel some uh, exports and, and or Argentina suddenly uh, get religion and, and get, get life and start selling again, then I think um, we'd see a pretty good setback in the soybeans. But for now, we've got back up on these prices that look pretty good. So it's, since in this report they did reduce the carryover for the major four crops, will that affect the farmer's crop mix at planting time? Well, I, I don't know. You know, the, the, the question that, and kind of the surprise I had in the report, you know, on the 31st, was the government made a comment uh, both, uh, in their outlook meeting on the end of February in Washington, and then again, they said was confirmed by the actual surveys from farmers last month that said that there might be five, 5.1 million acres that goes unplanted due to economic uh, conditions. And I'm thinking, boy, you know, that's a stretch this early in the in the year. However, so we started looking back, and, and we looked back and said, okay, what were the prices when we increased corn and bean acres, and we found, you know, we always say, well, acres come out of the woodwork, you know, when prices are high. And uh, Informa and some of those in USD will tell us, well, these acres are laying idle, and somebody says, okay, I'll plant them now that you got $6 corn. Well, I went back and looked at that, and lo and behold, the prices that we were looking at uh, this year to make our uh, planning decision surveys, I guess you'd call them, were about what they were in 2007, not 2008. So we obviously dropped our, our our prices that the Board of Trade, at least, is offering us. And then in the meantime, our input costs have gone up. So it makes perfect sense that marginal land would might get set aside. And we asked some of our clients and said, do you plan to do that? And they said, well, yeah, you know, i got 40 acres that's kind of highly erodible. You know, at $6 corn, I'll plant it, but otherwise I think I'll put it to grass and we'll, we'll cut it for hay because hay is expensive. So the question is now, if the market believes that we need this corn and beans uh, to get by until next year's crop is planted, will they now decide or the marketplace say we need to bid prices high enough now to get those acres back into production so we got a cushion in case we don't get a very good crop? Uh, I've gone ahead and extrapolated out these numbers, and, and uh, my, my, my crop surveys were a little higher in corn and uh, a, a lot higher in beans. I brought them back and said, all right, if we plant another 700,000 acres of corn 
in another half a million acres of beans, by chance, what would happen if we got only last year's yields? You know, and if we don't get this proverbial two, two bushels an acre increase in corn, uh, two and a half, and then maybe uh, in the USDA has got a pretty good healthy uh, yield in there of, of 42 bushels, I believe, for next year. What if it's 39.5 like it was last year? Uh, we got a tightness problem in soybeans that doesn't go away this year. In, in fact, it would be at, we would be looking at about 125 million bushel carryover versus uh, the government's 300 bushel carryover. So really critical as to how many acres do we get planted and at what yield are we going to get this year. So it's going to be another one of those years uh, where uh, we're not going to know really until June 30th and how this thing's going to look. And then, of course, weather is going to be even more important this year than it was before. So going forward, what um, other numbers in this report or upcoming reports should farmers keep an eye on? Well, I would watch China. Uh, any, um, any hints, you know, they're, they're building their stocks, and they now have adequate stocks domestically to buffer any kind of uh, extreme move in, in soybeans. We, they did it last March a year ago where they, they, had a lot of, they, they dumped their domestic soybean oil on their market to curb speculation. We've just about, you know, with the government and the Congress and everybody else mad at the speculator, blaming him for everything except global warming, uh, he's gone. Uh, Board of Trade volume now by, by everybody is down about from 40 to 60 percent in some commodities. So you can't hardly get a speculator out there that wants to buy anything. The stock market grains, uh, he wants a story, and there's some doing it, but nowhere near the kind of volume and liquidity that we had last year. So uh, if we see for some, some reason uh, soybeans going up another dollar or so, uh, that will bring some beans into, our, you know, into, uh, into production in the United States. But then... China might just say, "All right, that's enough. We're not going to pay. We're not going to inflate it. It's just saying, let's dump a few beans on the domestic market, or let's cancel a cargo of beans." So, I look at it as, as to myself, can the world really consume twelve dollars soybeans and five dollars cash corn? You know, or say six dollars on the board of trade. I doubt we'll get that high without a crop problem. But even five dollars corn can. Uh, uh, when I was in Washington, talking to the people that put this survey together a couple months ago in December, they said, "Just remember, Jerry, if we don't plant the acres." There's nothing you can do with five dollar corn, uh, you know, and twelve dollar beans and eight dollar wheat, nine dollar wheat. Uh, if it goes there, you're going to curb demand even more. So, looking ahead, uh, I think you know it's really how the market's going to look at this thing, and they're going to say, "Well, the stimulus is working, our economy is back on track again, and gosh, we're going to eat a lot more uh, meat and everything." So you got to get cattle high enough to pay me five dollars for my corn. The hog guy is going to have to liquidate some hogs in order to get the hog prices back up. The chicken guy is already liquidating. He's, he's down to where the price is up, but he's not consuming the feed. So I find it very hard to believe that in a fundamental standpoint that, that uh, we got much more than 50 cents to go in corn and maybe a dollar in soybeans under, uh, under a screwy deal this spring with weather. Uh, I would look to be pricing some grain on a, on a surge because thinking we may not get it planted. And, of course, then we'll, uh, if it gets high enough, we'll probably curb demand some more. The, the livestock industry and the poultry industry just can't stand much more of this unless uh, our economy supports a lot higher prices in cattle and hogs. All right, and uh, I want one final thing. What you really want to watch today, I believe, is how the market closes. We've been anticipating a good market, in, uh, a good crop report this time, not a bearish one, and we got it, uh, neutral to friendly. Uh, certainly it may in, in, indicate that we're not going to get any worse in demand. So how this market closes, going into a three-day weekend, and we all know weather, you know, it changes like, it changes like the wind. Uh, we're looking wet and cool for April. What if we come in here? You know, who wants to sit here with profits if you're a speculator and say, what happens Sunday night if they come in here and say, wow, we just had an abrupt change in weather. It's going to be 70 degrees in northern Illinois, and Jerry's going to get his planter out next week, and I guess we're going to make it after all. So what will Argentina do over the weekend? So I'm, I'm thinking if this market opens higher, which they're calling it higher, how do we close? And if we can't, if we don't see profit taking and we don't see this thing sell off to at least close unchanged to down even today, we got a pretty good market going. Uh, there's somebody out there that's willing to take a risk and saying, I don't care what you think is going to happen, Jerry. Uh, I don't think you're going to get the crop in the ground, and I need to, I need to give you a, a fiscal stimulus to keep that planter going even well into May, even if you know uh, beyond what you normally would just to get that corn in the ground. So how, how we close today will be uh, will, will be important as to what the whole world thinks of these numbers that trade at the Board of Trade. All right. Well, thank you very much.